So I saw a tweet tonight and I felt like I should record something. This is something that I tweeted a while back. ArxJS can describe the complete asynchronous behavior of each feature in its declaration. It's for declarative code. ArxJS operators describe actual behavior. If you don't use them or equivalent explicitly, you'll be redefining them implicitly in scattered repetitive logic coupled to uh, business logic. I saw this tweet. This is what I was afraid of. So, yeah. This is exactly what I was afraid of when I first heard that the Angular team was decoupling from RxJS. The code on the right is objectively worse unless you're too lazy to try to understand super cryptic operators like take while or concat. So this is this is what I originally saw. This is a PR to and and he says it's excellent because it it was so thorough like it was it converted everything to signals. Um but it's not excellent. I was, I was a little strong in my language on this. Uh, but anyway, he says, converting observable to signal for Angular Tetris. Um, and he says, yeah, you should stick to some RxJS implementation. So here's before with some RxJS and here's after with signals. So yeah, this is what I was afraid of. I was afraid that people would be like, oh, look, Angular signals, we got to rewrite everything in signals right, signals right now. Just, But th there's literally no reactive solution for signals for asynchronous stuff. You have to use RxJS to have clean code in Angular today. Uh, so this uh, this was a little bit strong language, but I said this is complete trash. There's no way to look at that and know that there aren't 10 bugs in that spaghetti code. This async data flow is exactly what RxJS is perfect for. The original code isn't perfect, but this is objectively more scattered and complex. Look at this. This is the code on the right, the signal code. Uh, like, how else are you going to do this? You don't have timeout management with with signals yet. I'm, I'm kind of working on that, but we don't have it yet. So you're setting the interval ref. You're starting something running. This is imperative. You're controlling things. This is a controller. You're controlling stuff elsewhere. And if I were to highlight this, you know, like the React Hooks uh, talk way back, 2018, this would all be a rainbow, different features being controlled out of context. You couldn't look in any one place and understand anything. You can look at each line of code and you're understanding something's happening, but the names have to be like spot on for you to have any idea what's going on. And then to understand the state over time, you have to look at 50 different places. So this is literally like a spaghetti noodle. This is a spaghetti noodle. This is a spaghetti noodle. This is a spaghetti noodle. Each single imperative line and then it all ties together into a big ball of spaghetti. So to understand the behavior of anything, you have to look everywhere. It's scattered. It's, it's, yeah, it's scattered. So, yeah. Uh, close. Escape should close, but it doesn't, apparently. So, it's yeah, it's crazy. People are putting actual work into making code worse because, hey, signals. We got signals. I write everything in signals. It, this is like, yeah, it's a hype. It's a hype train right now. But we don't have signal components yet, so there's literally no benefit to this refactor. The code is longer, more complex and scattered, performs the same, and most likely has introduced multiple bugs that will be hard to find, because it's imperative. So, yeah, that's what I was afraid of, seeing a bunch of examples like that. And, uh, yeah, so it's kinda, it kind of sucks. Um, yeah, I was, I was sad to see that. But anyway, so... Uh, yeah, let's just look at one little example here. Uh, where was that? Right down here. Look at this. So this original tweet that I, that I tweeted a long time ago, six months ago ish. Um, this is a perfect example of this. You can, uh, so, so like OMG, who has time to learn 50 RxJS operators, pick your poison. You have no choice. You're either going to be understanding what take while means, which in my opinion is very easy to understand. You're taking while this returns true. Or this exact logic is going to be scattered and coupled to business logic. This blinking count greater than six. Now we're clearing an interval, setting some state back to original, 
and setting more states. So it, like, which one of these do you prefer? You have to understand take well. Oh, so sad. That's an extra operator you have to know. But get over it. You're a programmer. You have to learn tools that you're going to use. And this RxJS is a powerful tool. Learn it once instead of re-implementing it everywhere. Like you're a developer. You should invest in yourself. You should learn tools that are really good. RxJS is really good. So yeah, so there's that. So, but I didn't really actually love the original either. So I, I refactored it. I made it more uh, reactive. And um, yeah, I think at some point I just copied and pasted the whole thing. Yeah. So I can't show you exactly how it evolved over time. But basically, the idea is the old one had, uh, well, it has, well, this, this just subscribes to an observable, um, which is unfortunate manually is subscribing. Um, but here it's it's like this dot class name equals this dot class name equals this dot class name equals it's all controlling this. So this is not declarative. The de declaration is incomplete. It's scattered. The definition of how this changes over time is scattered. So there's no one declaration. Um, so I, so what it is over now. Um, so so before yeah, it was, this is the main thing that was controlling it. Uh, you have like a delay and a repeat. I don't remember exactly how this works. I didn't need to. I just, I just refactored what was here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It was, this is like the main process. And then it was like running these uh, smaller things that were setting imperatively the class name. And yeah, so there was the run thing and the eyes thing. And I didn't know really what that was. Um, Maybe I should show you. Yeah, check this out. There he is, running. That's the run thing. And look, here's the ice thing. Blink, blink, blink. Yeah. So pretty simple. So anyway, it repeats because it's alternating between those things. And so I was like, okay, how do you actually make this declarative? You you define things, okay? The, the running thing is a running state. It's it's a thing, okay? So the blinking eye cla eyes class is what is being defined here. You're defining a class at the end. And so why not make that a self-contained thing? So yeah. And then the other thing is running. What does it, what is the class name that's set when it's running? And uh, so I just defined what would the running class be at different times. This took a little bit of more logic to do declaratively because I had to convert some things to ternaries instead of this if statements. Um, yeah, that's why I don't like if statements. Like to me, if statements are most of the time a code smell because they're they're not defining anything. Like you can only use them imperatively. So ternaries, even though they intimidated me as a junior dev, that's another thing you should learn. It's declarative. In one statement, you can define something. And you you can spread it out, you can split it out, give things easier names. So range, I was like, okay, what we're doing is whenever it gets to one of these ten. Uh, uh, multiples of 10 were toggling between right and left running. Um, so what we want to do here is uh, define like zones where uh, it, like it will be left and where it'll be right. So the way to do that is, okay, I see that these are between zero and 10 and then one and two. If this was between zero and one and one and two, then I can just do like even and odd to represent the ranges. So that's what I did. So the range divided by 10, so you get one, two, and three, and then uh, divisible by two, then return left or right. And then there's this last thing about finalizing state. So anyway, I did, so I just rewrote that so it's, so it's internally declarative. And so you don't have to have this finalize that imperatively sets the final state. But anyway, the code shrunk a bit. So 42 lines of code, um, if you just count the code itself and not like the boilerplate for Angular, it's it's like 32% smaller. It's like, yeah, 35 versus 40 something. Well, I don't, I don't remember exactly. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a lot smaller. So yeah, that's a lot smaller. And you know, all I did is get rid of like four or five imperative statements. Uh, but 
the code, the imperative signal one. Yeah, check this out. I'm gonna open up the PR. Look at this, this is crazy. I was like, wait, what, what? this is all the same file? Whoa, 146 lines. There's no way, there's, there's no way that you can measure this and say it's better. I mean, they do have some more explicit names. That's the only way it's better. The original was a little bit like run, like, okay, something's running, or you're telling something to run. It could be code. Like, that's not a very clear name. But still, way better than this. This is just, there's no... Uh, also, if you're using this, the reason the Angular team makes you specify allow signal rights is because it should be an exception. It's not, it shouldn't be the norm. So don't write your code like that by default. Oh, man. Yeah. So this is what I was afraid of. We're going to see more and more of this. I don't, I don't think... I think it, there, there, there are a couple of things. Uh, you have people who had bad experiences with RxJS. And they're like, oh, so many operators. Uh, I want to I wanna not learn uh, things that are useful. I want to I wanna, um, look at every individual line of code and understand it. And I don't notice that I'm doing way more work to understand the feature itself because it's spread out over time and it's incremental and... Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's such a no-brainer to learn RxJS and get good at it. But anyway, so, yeah, I was afraid of this, and I kind of knew it was going to happen anyway. Overall, signals are a definite improvement to Angular. They're just some things that you need signals for. Really good synchronization, like component inputs. RxJS observables can't handle that very well. They, each input would emit each at a time, but then, so you use combined latest, it would emit multiple times, you know, with that diamond problem, the glitches. Um, we need signals, but we need them for certain things, not everything. We don't want to put everything in signals because signals are like subscriptions. They're always active. So we can't even have something as basic as Tanstack query in React where your data isn't fetched until the component needs it. But it's also independent. So if multiple components need it at the same time, it's not going to refetch them. And then when all of them are done, then it clears it out. So ultimate flexibility. And, and I'm just trying to get that basic level of flexibility. Your data, your state isn't tied to a component, and it's not infinite either. Like, isn't that desirable to have state for exactly as long as it's needed? That's that's de that's more declarative. You're not like each component isn't taking responsibility for uh, the data itself. The data can be declared on its own as its own thing, and then whoever needs it can get it. It should be that easy. And if you define it in signals, you can't do that. So ArcSys is still good for that because you can have a signal in the component that refers to the observable and calls to signal. That's a subscription, um, and it will run exactly when the component needs it. And if it doesn't run, it, the data is not fetched. So people are overusing signals a lot. And the issue is they're doing it in a very naive and sort of reactive, <laughs> like not, not code reactive, but like crowd reactive. They're reacting as a crowd to this new a uh, cool thing and like, like let's write everything in it that's not a good idea i'm trying to build signal operators to make it as easy as possible to write declarative async code even with signals but right now you need rxjs and you should probably use state adapt because uh i wrote it and i love it and it would make me really happy if you tried it out uh yeah, somebody just opened an issue today they i was so happy they said uh, can you create entity adapter and support having something other than ID as the identifier for your entities? And I was like, actually, that that this is a cool thing about adapters. Adapter state adapters are flexible. So what I did in entity adapter is I just had it select off of the uh, well, it uses your adapter's ID selector, so you can define your own ID. And I do the same thing with filter, filtering and sorting. 
you can use a selector to define what how you want your entity sorted. All you have to do is define an adapter for an individual entity and pass that to create entity adapter and it will automatically create um, selectors for selecting all entities sorted by those selectors you specify. So I, yeah, it made me so happy though that somebody's using it. I spent a lot of time on that, <laughs> a lot of time. And I think it's really cool. So I love it if you checked it out and open issues with questions, uh, open a PR to help with documentation. But um, I think it's the best way to code declaratively in, in React or Angular or Solid or Svelte right now. But definitely use RxJS either way. But anyway, so that's my rant for today. Thanks for, thanks for listening. It helps to have someone listen, you know, when I'm, uh, anyway. Okay. That's done. That's it for the video.